what's up? I'm Katie Bang, and today we're going to talk about my fishy tank, which happens to be right behind me, and we will get there very quickly. I'm just going to kind of tell you what fish I have in there, how I chose them, how I messed up really bad when I started in the fish hobby, and everything along those lines. I wanted to start a fish tank, so I did a lot of research on angelfish. I thought I was going to do an angelfish tank, and then I went to the fish store, and kind of got carried away. I really fell in love with both Oscars and cichlids. I got really bad advice at the fish store and didn't do research on my own because I had done all my research prior to this about angelfish because that's what I was planning on getting. And the guy at the fish store is like, get two Oscars and two cichlids, peacock cichlids. So I did and very quickly came to find out that, that was an awful decision. But since I had made the commitment, I stuck with it and I fixed my mistakes. And now we're here and we have two pretty big fish tanks, and my Oscars and cichlids are not together. Hi. <laughs> Yo. I'm gonna get picked up to get 110 gallon or 125 gallon, I don't know exactly how big it is, but we're getting that tank today. So I'm waiting to get picked up. Jazzy says hi. We're gonna do some tank stuff. Fish life forever. Fish life started with betas, now we're here. So I'm just disclaiming before I'm in a car randomly driving somewhere. That is where we're driving and I think we're getting food first because I'm hungry. Jazz is really excited about it. Aren't I so professional? Mm -hmm. <laughs> on oh, the floor. Top five professionals, come on. Right, exactly. First off, Oscars are from South America, and cichlids, or the peacock cichlids I got, were from Lake Malawi. I think that's how you say it. They just have different needs, the way they swim is different, and Oscars are giant, and they get to be really big. So, one Oscar full grown needs a 55 gallon to himself, and two needs even more than that. So tank mates are kind of out of the question unless you have a very gigantic tank. And for Oscars, what I found is that their tank water needs to stay between 72 and 76 degrees Fahrenheit. And for cichlids, it needs to stay between 76 and 82 degrees Fahrenheit. So the perfect water temperature in the middle of that isn't going to be compatible. But without further ado, let's just get into the cichlid talk. Because of my mistake in making all these fish tanks now, I'm definitely going to be doing a whole video on my Oscar tank and what they look like and their story. But for now, we're just going to focus on my cichlid tank. When I walked into the fish store, I was just immediately drawn to the cichlids, specifically the peacock cichlids. This is because they were so beautiful, but they were such active swimmers. They swam around the bottom in the middle, and they just were so pretty. They were like picking up gravel and moving it around. I was like, this is such an active tank, and I could never get bored with it. And since I'm just such a a go 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 type of person, I wanted a tank to match that. So peacock cichlids are known as the most calm and colorful of the cichlid family, which are two of my favorite things because I wanted them to be decently feisty, but I didn't want them to be aggressive and have to worry about them eating each other. Even though there is still a little bit of a risk with peacock cichlids, they are just known to be a little bit more tame and timid than the rest of the cichlid family. And the colors on them were just beautiful. I personally love blues and yellows and just like spots, so I was in love with all the color that you could put in one tank. So I started out originally with a planted tank, and my cichlids didn't eat the plants, but they just tore them up. They would not leave them alone. I got like the hardy ones, like hop, java ferns. Are they hop or java? I never know. I think they're java ferns. I got the hardy ones, they tore those up, so I was just like, you know what, plants are not in your future. And I think I'm gonna try with fake plants next, but for now I have mostly rocks in my tank. The reason I have a lot of rocks in my tank is because even though the peacock cichlids aren't as aggressive, they're still extremely territorial. So with this, I put a bunch of rocks and made a bunch of dark places so they could get away from each other and they can all have their own little territories. So I tried to plan out the most little spaces I could for all of them so they can all have their own little territories and not have to fight each other for like one big territory. For a community of cichlids, you need at least an 100 gallon. I bought a 110 gallon used and then I painted it and did all that fun stuff with it. With this tank, since I wasn't expecting to get such a big tank or into like cichlids right away, I wasn't too obsessed with like the gravel and everything like that, but I very quickly like got it 
then I painted it because I was like, I want it to be blue. And then I had black gravel in there and then I changed it to like a little rock gravel because I thought it was more natural and pretty and made their colors pop more. So I put a lot of love and care into this tank. Another thing to take into consideration is that since they're very active swimmers and like to have their territories, a horizontal tank is the best because you want them to have room to swim and you also want room for lots of territories. Now, cichlids aren't the most sensitive fish, but when I was adding them into my tank, I did drip acclimate them, which pretty much means you put them in a bucket and you take a little siphon and you put the water in, tied in a knot, and it starts to drip your tank water into their original water that they came in. So this just helps them adjust and doesn't put them in too much shock when you're putting them in your tank. So I got these guys from a local breeder. I didn't want to go to a chain. I wanted the breeder to have had them since they were little babies and know what their parents were like and that they were all taken care of. So he actually is really passionate about cichlids and he does it out of his house. He got these fish from Lake Malawi, which is a very large lake. And because it's such a large lake, they're not used to like sudden changes in the pH of the water, or sudden changes in the temperature. So you wanna make sure that the water is set and it stays consistent. I used to do like test strips for checking the water, but now I use like the liquid test because that's a lot more accurate and quicker. I really didn't want to get wild caught fish just because I don't like the idea of that. So all of these fish, the ones he has were from like Malawi, but all the ones he has now aren't because he's been breeding them for so long that they're all captive birds. Cichlids are all before. So for their food, I've been using a staple of a cichlid pellet, and then I've been putting brine shrimp in there every couple days just to let them have a little bit of a treat. One thing I've noticed is if I put a lot of food in there, they kind of stress out because it changes their water. So what I've been doing to adjust to that is giving them a couple small meals every single day. So now I have these six cichlids, but I wanted one more type of fish and I wanted a school fish to kind of change it up and keep the peace. So I decided to go with the little barbs. What these are, are their barbs. They're a little underrated in my opinion. I love them so much. You get them and as they grow, they start to become really iridescent and beautiful and shiny. But the main reason I chose these barbs is because they're known as the peacekeepers and they're really common in cichlid tanks for keeping the peace. The reason for this is because they're such active swimmers and they also in schools will kind of go up to the chaos and they are very confident. They're semi-aggressive, they're not super aggressive, but when I feed them, they definitely are coming up to me. Yeah, and honestly, when I went in, I knew I wanted a school fish and I went into the fish store one of my favorites in Arizona, and I walk in and I'm like, I want to see a barbs or some type of school fish that I can put in that'll do well with the cichlids. I had a couple different types in mind, but I wasn't 100% set on one. And there were so many filament barbs together and they were younger, so they weren't as pretty at the time. But he, I put my hand on the tank and they all just went swimming up and like, I like them. They love me and they just wanted food, but like, I felt like they liked me. I am definitely not a professional when it comes to fish, but I have complete understanding for why people love fish so much. I didn't understand the fish hobby, but this tank, I've spent so many hours on, so much money on it, and it's been 100% worth it. I personally just adore the filament barbs, so let me know what you think of them. Dad and my boyfriend were both like not too excited about the filament barbs, but they both admitted that as time has gone out on, those are their favorite fish because it's just so fun to watch them follow each other. I love seeing them all interact. I love seeing their territories. They have so much personality and I'm so glad that I got such an active tank. Everyone that I told I got cichlids was like, oh no, girl, like be careful. Those are hard. They'll ruin your life. And so far, I absolutely love my cichlids. So yeah, let me know what you think about them down below. Bye!